Welcome back to the Evolving Wellness Podcast. My name is Sarah. Today, I am talking with Dr. Mark Sherwood about some of the discrepancies in the functional medicine model and what we can do to treat the body in a more holistic, approachable way. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Today, I've got Dr. Mark Sherwood on the show, and he is a very interesting guest with a very interesting past. And we are talking all about this kind of dysfunctional functional medicine model, even though he does kind of work in the alternative medicine model, but where it's going wrong, what is going wrong, and how so many people are just kind of spinning their wheels, how allopathic medicine is not helping people, and even functional medicine is missing the mark. So I'm so excited to share this information with you. We're also talking about hydrogen. I have a huge interest in hydrogen. We have been using the Holy Hydrogen machine. My code there is Sarah K, and I'll put a link in the show notes. If you hear this conversation about hydrogen and you're interested in learning more, make sure you head to the show notes and use that code. And we're gonna talk about some of the medical uses for hydrogen from a doctor's point of view, how he's using it clinically. So lots of really great information in this episode. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. All right. Thank you so much for tuning into the Evolving Wellness Podcast. My name is Sarah, and today I have Dr. Mark Sherwood with me to talk about all things hydrogen, his background, and how he's used it therapeutically, and and just whatever else comes up. So Dr. Mark, thank you so much for being here today. Hey, Sarah. Thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to this. Honored to be with you. Yeah, and you've got really, I mean, I was just going through your website, you've got a really interesting background and have worked with people all over the world in different capacities. So maybe we can just talk about that briefly before we jump into more talk about hydrogen and and different uses that you've seen in in your practice. Yeah, it's been a journey. I've worn a lot of hats in my day, Sarah. It's it's interesting, just in a very, very brief uh, 30,000 foot view, and then I can go a little deeper. But um. I was actually a police officer years ago. I Mm -hmm. did that for over 20 years. Uh, Prior to that, I was a professional baseball player. And then during the time on the police department, I was on the SWAT team for a decade and um, a lot of stories to tell there, of course. And then um, uh, little did you know, kind of fun fun fact was um, years ago, there was a group of people that went around the world called the power team. And we used to break uh, bricks and ice and Ben Steele and um, blow up hot water bottles. And we would travel all around the world to, uh, and been on every stage on national TV. I wonder and, if you guys ever came to my elementary school. I used to go to a, a private Christian school and I feel like there are these guys that came in and like broke phone books and we're. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You're <laughs> aging me there, Sarah, but yes, that was, that was, I was one of those men, you know, I, I used to wear the, the headband that said power on it. So nice. Yeah, uh, but that was fun. And then um, sort of towards the end of my police career, maybe the last five, six, seven years, I was uh, transferred to uh, the police academy where part of my responsibility was uh, establishing a wellness program. And of course, <clears throat> you know, being in the physique, you know, kind of quasi drug free bodybuilding area for a long time, um, you know, it seemed like a natural thing, but then I, started studying, you know, and I've always been curious and probably my, my greatest downfall and also benefit is that probably I keep asking why, or why is that, or why does it have to be that way? Or why is it that way? And which, you know, why is that powerful question? I think it keeps us learning. And, and I think that's what we're missing a lot in, in today's world. You know, we just kind of settle in to think what we know to be true and it's not, you know, never was, but we just got to keep moving. So I got into that area and started studying and I, I wanted to first, my initial process was to really figure out how I could keep police officers alive longer, you know, maybe post-retirement because they were only living an average of 66 years of age, mm-hmm. which was shocking, you know, after serving your community, city, states, country like that, you know? And so as I started studying, I realized that um, there's more to this and people around our country and world were suffering. So they they really were not getting as much out of life as they could and uh, probably not experiencing the fullness of life. And so I went on this mission to kind of keep learning. And um, 
I did. I, I decided to become a naturopathic doctor. And um, shortly thereafter, I met my wife, Michelle, and she's an osteopath. And, um, you know, we just, it was love at first sight. I mean, I, I call her not my spare rib, but my prime rib, you know, and people laugh at that. Um, but we worked together and the, the birth of the Functional Medical Institute was uh, birthed out of pain. Go figure. Uh, my wife, uh, she's much more beautiful and more intelligent than I am. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to say that, but she was kicked out of mainstream medicine as an osteopath, mm -hmm. top of her class, just a board certified intern of sports medicine, but she was kicked out of medicine because too many people were getting well. And she wasn't, didn't have enough procedures and processes and studies that she was running. And they told her, your payer mix does not match what we want. And if people don't think right now it's about money, you need to wake up and get your head on the sand because it absolutely is about money. It's not about people. There's no such thing as health insurance. It's mm -hmm. sick insurance. And we need to call it for what it is. And so out of that pain was birth the Functional Medical Institute. And we've been at this, you know, almost 15 years now. And, um, our, our mission really has been about leading people down a pathway of true healing, whatever that meant. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's more than just functional medicine. It's, it's, it's not alternative. This is mainstream stuff. It always has been. It's common sense. And uh, we've just tried to keep learning and figuring out all kinds of modalities that we could uh, bring into people's lives. And I, I think there's probably uh, seven, eight areas that we really focus on as, as sort of a whole with every person. Uh, it's nutrition, sleep, Stress management, movement slash exercise, of course. Genetics, we run a genetics panel that's very deep and um, a lot of information heavy. That's on everybody. Uh, we do a ton of peptides, which are short chains of amino acids. Uh, we use uh, hormones as appropriate. We also look at um, glycobiology, which is looking at the uh, the sugars on the outside of proteins. And and that's not done in America much. So uh, those those areas we look at, and then we're always looking at the emotional, you know, st community, uh, spiritual aspects of things, because if you're not looking at the whole person, you know, you're you're disconnecting the process. People, Sarah, are emotional, mm -hmm. physical, spiritual beings, and we cannot separate those. When we do, it's just absolutely dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a parallel. What medicine is we we've separated out these little department specialties. And, uh, and that's not how it works. Body doesn't work like that. Life doesn't work like that. The world doesn't work like that. So, you know, uh, that was a big answer to a short question, but that just kind of our mindset's a little bit different. And uh, we've been doing this for a long, long time. And, um, you know, COVID, the whole thing that that was or wasn't, um, it didn't it didn't change what we did. Mm. I think of anything else, it probably opened eyes up more to begin to see what maybe uh, was uh, not the best that could be better. Mm -hmm. I agree. And there, I mean, it was a challenging time, but I feel like there are so many people now that are kind of willing to look at things through a new set of eyes, especially when it comes to the healthcare system and when it comes to how dysfunctional it is and how it is, you know, it's basically to keep you alive. And then even that yeah. is kind of questionable whether or not, whether or not that even happens. Uh, so yeah, it's um, and insurance is a disaster. You know, we were talking just a little bit ago before we started recording the episode of the challenges I've had with my daughter and her health. And uh, you know, we've got the head of neurology at the children's hospital recommending a treatment for her, and we've gone through the appeals process with the insurance company three times, and they're saying no. You know, and it's like, how do you know better? Then the head of neurology at the hospital of what the child it's his patient what she needs you know <laughs> but it's all about the money and uh yeah it's uh, it's very sad and so people are so many people are in situations like that where they're like okay well i can't afford something that's forty thousand dollars a treatment what can i do and so they're looking at these alternative uh ways of looking at medicine and that's you know really what i like to talk about on the show and bring in different viewpoints and talk about different modalities that could be supportive for people who are in those situations. Cause I feel, I don't know if you're, you're seeing it, but I'm seeing a huge uptick in autoimmune conditions, people, uh, issues with mold and, you know, environmental toxins and just people's bodies are overloaded autoimmune. Um, 
And I think there is an emotional component, a hundred percent at play with these conditions. But um, I don't know what 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 do you think is causing this this drive and this uptick? Or do we have more mold in the environment than we used to? Do we, you know, like what what do you think is going on here? I think there's a couple of uh, multiple things playing uh, a role in this. It's probably not one; it's all, mm -hmm. and it goes back. You know, I think we're, we we. I'll draw a parallel with the concept of, can of cancel culture. You know, we, oh, yeah. we're, we're trying, we've seen that in, in not just mainstream political arenas, but we're seeing it in, in this idea of health. Mm -hmm. You know, people that are here, I just encourage you to pull up photos of people uh, 75 years ago, beach photos. You're not going to see obesity there. It's very, very rare. And back in those days, uh, and again, I'm dating myself here a little bit, when people gained weight and had too much weight, it was considered unhealthy. Mm -hmm. uh, but today that's been flipped. And you got to go back probably to the late seventies, early eighties. And I think that was the switch that has sort of started things going in the wrong direction mm -hmm. there. At that point, a lot of people remember the old uh, development of the food pyramid, which is nothing more uh, than the government. government. Saying, yeah. It was like, it was like, Sarah, you rest of you American people, you're so dumb. You don't know how to take care of yourself. You don't know how to feed yourself. You don't know how to really, uh, you know, feed your family. So we're going to teach you how to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a disaster because that mm -hmm. sort of was based upon lobbyist. And so you had this bottom of the pyramid, which is, is fascinating to me. Six to 11 servings of brains and uh, grains and breads. And, um, you know, we didn't talk about sugars and fast became bad. Mm -hmm. Well, we need fats, mm -hmm. and but a whole other subject for another day, perhaps. But the bottom line is, when that happened, all this money came in from the government mm -hmm. to subsidize, you know, uh, the dairy industry, wheat, corn, soy, mm -hmm. beef, beer, you know, all this. And so you had this big old influx of processed foods. Fat is bad. You had this this sugar, no fat stuff. You had this, uh, everything went calorie driven. Mm -hmm. and you had this idea of a bunch of gluten being put into things. And uh, you saw this uh, big trend in increased autoimmune conditions. Mm -hmm. You saw mm -hmm. this big trend in obesity, type two diabetes, cancers, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, osteoporosis, heart disease. And it just ex exponentially, you know, just went out of sight and there's no end to sight. I mean, we are, this, I believe, is the thing that's going to destroy this country. It's it's the enemy within. And we've got to get out of the idea of thinking that the system's going to change and trying to mm -hmm. change it, spend the money trying to change it, and, and uh, effort and emotions, and develop and live in, in those traditional systems that are outside of that. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's what we've done. Yes, it costs. Yes, there's money. But yes, I believe provision is out there if we just really embrace the idea that the answers are there as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, you know, my my community here listening, they're familiar with my story of my daughter and, you know, the injury that I believe and nothing on the show is medical advice, just a little <laughs> side note there. I want everyone to have informed consent and do what you feel is right for your family, for yourself, for your children. But you know, speaking from somebody who completely trusted the medical system, completely trusted uh, everything I was told by conventional doctors and the quote unquote system, have my life completely jerked, the rug jerked out from underneath me, you know, watching her health over the last 16 years has just been like, that's why I do what I do. Everyone's like, oh, Sarah does what she does because she wants to, you know, optimize hormones and uh, talk about weight loss and beauty and anti-aging. That stuff's cool and fun because I'm trying to stay alive because I have a child that is probably going to, I, she's going to live with me until I die. And I am always thinking like, how can I anti-age myself so I can live forever? Like, so she, so I don't have to leave her here without me. Like the, the whole purpose of what I do is not so that I can look good or whatever. It's, you know, that's a fun benefit, but like, I want to be able to take care of my child who is very injured by the system, you know, and on the other side of the coin, I have a son now who's almost 18 months. So we did not do any medical interventions of the standard type with him. Never had an ear infection, healthy, started babbling at five weeks old. He's 17 months on, you know, saying full sentences now. I mean, he's just a remarkable child, just remarkable. And I'm like, 
yeah, he's unscathed by this system and we don't feed him the baby foods. He eats, you know, kind of an ancestrally appropriate diet with healthy fats and, you know, all the things. And it's just like, man, it's just sad because there's so many people that it's almost like people have to get burned um, before their eyes will open up. And that's really what 2020 did, I think, for a lot of people is they started getting burned by the system and being questioning the validity of these things like the food pyramid and these medical interventions that people were being forced to to undergo. And uh, people started kind of saying wait a minute (laughs) wait a minute this is this is not this is not what I thought it was right maybe maybe I shouldn't be so trusting and and you know look at my health you know you know you mentioned like mold I I didn't didn't really get Mm. that answer but um mold's been around it's even addressed bible you know people forget that you know like the 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 Bible gives you sort of mold remediation kind of treatments. Um, what's really happened with us is is I tend to lean heavily on the terrain theory. Yeah, amen. And really, yes. you no, know, like it's our environment in yes. which we're created, and you know that environmental um, sort of disturbance has created this uh, landscape or terrain or territory or climate inside of our bodies that's very. Um, lack uh, lacks resiliency mm-hmm. it doesn't have the ability mm-hmm. to defend and so I, I think yes we've got more chemicals today mm-hmm. yes we probably got more um problems today more pollution mm-hmm. etc non-native emf uh, yeah and so but it's not necessarily that mm-hmm. it's, it's i think it's probably more of we lack resilience because we're not doing anything to think about that to really understand that and and, and that's been what we've been trying to do for a long, long time is to build the resilience up again. Mm-hmm. And, and you mentioned the key thing about um, aging. And there's there's two things that I really want people to understand. Genetically speaking, our genes, and we test these all the time, have changed 2% in 10,000 years. Mm-hmm. That's it. So if mm-hmm. the genes were the problem, right. then why wouldn't we have had the same problems 500 1,000 or even 200 years ago. So, right. you know, we've heard the saying, and, and I don't want to like disparage anyone that's lost lives with violence because I get that. Guns kill people mm-hmm. or guns don't kill people. People kill people. Mm-hmm. Somebody has to pull the trigger. Genes are like that too. They're the environment, right. but the or the genes are that the loaded gun and the environment pulls that trigger. And right. so at the same time, all this has happened, you know, over the course of time, our actual biological aging speed has sped up you know i believe the organ systems are probably capable as per the uh, blue zones you know we see Mm -hmm. to uh, to be extended out there to the 120 year range i think that that's what their lifespan is probably and um, we have accepted the idea in this country that if you lived 75 or 80 years old you had a really good life you know Mm -hmm. we just kind of like lowered the bar and sort of had this participation trophy mentality and it's got us in trouble. Mm-hmm. We've got a, a less than excellence drive. We are satisfied with adequacy or maybe less than adequacy. We don't try to do anything else. We don't talk about anything else. We don't try to do any better. And if we don't have a good results, we blame it on somebody else. It's got to go mm-hmm. back to our own responsibility, what we do. And we actually can test that biological aging speed and process. I mm-hmm. do it all the time. And you know, really happy to report my wife and I have been able to get our immune system age where it's functioning like in the 20s, which is a fascinating study um, that's actually just still evolving and developing. But there's so many cool things out there that people can do right there modality wise. And and we just got to like open our minds up and start connecting with people like yourself and sharing information with other people. The greatest mm-hmm. messages are not shared on the internet. They're shared from person to person. And I hope people remember that today. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, having conversations like this is so important because Mm -hmm. if you just turn on the TV or if you just listen to the news or if you just, it it can be really depressing and it can be really daunting. And you, there's like a lack of, uh, you feel like there's a lack of control and there's, you know, people are not taking accountability. It can be a hard conversation to have. uh, But the, we, I want to empower people through the guests that I bring on, the things that we talk about. Um, even though I know a lot of people that listen 
are in some pretty tough situations, myself included, you know, my child uh, being hospitalized multiple times over the last year and, and just all the stuff that we've been through, I am still not going to be jaded. I'm not giving up hope. And I'm always going to continue to believe that there is a, a healing path available. Um, and it's through these types of connections that, you know, these healing connections can be made and these pathways can be opened yeah. for people. So I think it's critical that we keep having these conversations and it, it it's not genes, you know, I think it's the mitochondria uh, dysfunctioning when, when your mitochondria, right. when, when you cannot move electrons across the mitochondrial respiratory uh, chain, like it, you're getting tons of reactive oxygen species, tons of lost energy in the body, inflammation. Um, it's a dysfunction at the level of the mitochondria, I think. Right. Um, that is causing genes to be expressed um, because like you said it's, it's that we haven't had these huge genetic changes there's a there's an issue with with the mitochondria and uh, you know I think people need to to look at their look at their lives on on that level and how we support that um, I don't know how you feel about that but yeah <laughs> I do I think it's a very important subject because I think people need to know and just to just to break it down, and and I hope people really get this. This is probably one of the most important things we got to get. Life begins when that sperm fertilizes the egg, and you form that first the zinc spark. That first thing, that first life, and then you get this cell. You get like uh, mom and dad are like potatoes of genes, and they come together and make a mashed potato. Brand new genetic um, winding of the clock, knitting together, if you will, and inside of the cells all of them there's something called the nucleus and the nucleus is where your 23 chromosomes of mom and dad are interwoven and the 23 chrom chromosomes on those chromosomes you've got our you know 28 30,000 genes structured along there and then genes are made of nucleotides which are nothing more than letters that are constructed in order to make proteins so and then within a cell you, you also have these organelles. One of them is very important. It's the mitochondria. So it's like the powerhouse of that mm -hmm. cell. So when the outside environment, whatever it is, whether it be an outside toxin, pollutants, energy uh, or in injury and or something that's generated inside, uh, it, we got to deal with it. Whatever dealing with it is, you know, the resiliency I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The mitochondria has to crank out energy at the cell level so that the DNA can unwind itself to create the necessary ingredients for the protein to be made to deal with function. And mm -hmm. proteins can be characterized as antibodies. They can be characterized as hormones, peptides, whatever. But the point being is it all begins with the cell. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned something about the cell, which is fascinating to me, is when you create energy at the cell, it requires oxygen mm -hmm. and nutrients. Mm -hmm. So if we eat poorly, we have no ability to have nutrients. And if we don't exercise, we lose our oxygenation capacity. So you've got oxygen, nutrients smashed together to create this molecule of energy for the cells, which is called ATP mm -hmm. or adenosine triphosphate. Now, you mentioned the last phase before we get to that, before that's transferred on to create the powering up or continued powerization of our process is there are, are five complexes mm -hmm. within the electron transport chain. Now, not to freak everybody out, but you know, the, the bottom line is within the electron transport chain, a natural byproduct of creation of energy is waste products. Mm -hmm. And those waste products would be known as free radicals. Mm -hmm. And it just makes sense if we draw this picture in the sense, um, Sarah, of a, of a, a refinery mm -hmm. creating gasoline. And we know there's waste products. If that's not cleaned up and the, the waste products get built up so bad, well, it just makes sense that refinery is not going to function very well. Mm -hmm. And in this analogy, when the free radicals don't get dealt with appropriately, we lose energy output. We lose cellular response to the environment therefore we lose the ability to become resilient and deal with the insults of the environment and so i'm all about the mitochondria i'm mm -hmm. all about optimizing that i'm all about um generating maximum response in that and salvaging that 
Mm-hmm. Uh, over the course of time and our cells have the ability to do that they have the ability they to do. repair themselves they have the ability to, to mop up those free radicals that has has the ability to really function in a very uh, mind-blowing way yeah. if we do the right thing mm-hmm. absolutely and that's that's the issue you know i think too many people have uh, inflammation and then the diet is feeding into that i'm doing a yeah a practitioner course, creating a practitioner course right now on, on leptin. And, yeah. you know, when you really look at leptin and those recept, the leptin receptor in the brain and leptin, excess leptin is basically obesity, right? If you have yeah. leptin resistant, yeah. you're, you're, you're obese, you have excess body fat. Um, but one of the things that stops leptin from communicating with the brain which is going to also signal thyroid and immune system yeah. and bone health and heart health and so many things in the body is inflammation. And so in my, in my protocol, week one is all about light, but week two is all about the nutrition, you know, and I've pulled in so many studies about, uh, you know, what foods are inflammatory. And when your brain is inflamed, again, that leptin signaling can't happen. And so it's kind of this like negative feedback loop. I don't think people Mm -hmm. understand, you know, everyone gets so emotional when they talk about food and nutrition. It's like gluten has been shown across multiple studies to uh, block the leptin receptor. Uh, Dairy as well, causing an inflammatory reaction to block the leptin receptor. Um, Lectins, same thing yeah. like so, so many things that it's like it's not an emotional conversation like this is really what's happening and if you want to uh bring your leptin levels down if you want that signaling to start happening again you're going to have to make those changes and you're going to also have to support the mitochondria um so again everyone kind of wants a quick fix they want to supplement they want to inject a peptide they want to do these other things but you have to i mean i i think that you agree with me you've got to have the the foundations of, of nutrition down as well when it comes to healing autoimmune conditions and and dealing with the, making the body more resilient. You know, sometimes we have to pull some of these things out and they don't really belong in the diet as food, um, in my opinion, you know. They're not fit for human consumption. I mean, I, yeah. I think it's um, utter brilliance that um, Hippocrates, who we probably heard of, known as the father of, he, he's not the father of modern day, uh, interpretation of medicine. He's the father of what we're talking about here. He mm-hmm. said uh, three things I think are very powerful. He said more than this, but I think this is utter brilliance way before his time. He said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. I mean, that that's, goes right in the face of uh, first line therapy in our current medical system is a medicine. We don't talk about nutrition. If they did, the clients or the uh, clinicians would get terminated. That's right. my one. Um, secondly, he said, uh, health begins in the gut. Third disease begins in the colon. And you mentioned something very key that I think people don't think about today is, is um, brain inflammation. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like leaky gut, many of us heard about that. Leaky guts, leaky brain. Mm-hmm. And when you get leaky gut, you're going to develop these autoimmune mm-hmm. uh, tendencies in a high propensity. You're going to also develop this gram negative bacteria, lipopolysaccharides, known as mm-hmm. LPS, and they're going to they're going to be up there, and they're going to cross the blood brain barrier, and they're going to house themselves in your brain, creating more brain inflammation. And you talk about the the onset of obesity, creating more leptin, and mm-hmm. it hits us so fast, we become leptin resistant, and then all of a sudden now you go there, and it's got to be the thyroid. So we need a levothyroxine or synthroid, and that's not fixing anything. And nobody ever talked about the cause. Right. So. I, too, like you, concur that the majority of all autoimmune patterns are generated from the gut dysfunction that we have. And then you have this added insult that you might have from a a trigger of an immune-inducing vaccine or vaccines that are perpetual bombarding the system. So you got the uh, leaky gut going on, the inflammatory foods coming in, and then all of a sudden you got this other stuff hitting you. And it's like getting hit by a train. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's almost like a boxer who has been punched and jabbed and punched and jabbed, and they become punch drunk. They become right. dysfunctional, and that's how the body is when we get this insults that's happening. But you know, the body's resilient. Mm-hmm. I've seen it turn around, man. I've seen some crazy mm-hmm. cool things by just turning the system around and doing the basic things to support this, uh, this functionality that we can so have. 
Thank you so much for listening to the Evolving Wellness Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, make sure to share it with a friend or a family member, especially if this message is resonating with you and you think that something in the conversation could be helpful to a loved one, to a friend in a Facebook group or on Instagram. I would love to share this message with as many people as possible. You can also always go to Apple or Spotify to leave the show up to a five-star review. Leave us a like, leave us a comment on YouTube. And those are other ways that you can support the show and spreading this message. And let's go ahead and jump back into today's show. I guess that's kind of maybe where we can lead into to hydrogen a little bit because yeah. that's something that we've been using with my daughter and we've we've tried every i mean like everything and uh, last summer she tested positive for mold and you know all the you know all the functional testing costs thousands and thousands of dollars and it's like we didn't we checked the home no mold but i went ahead and did some uh installed some dehumidifiers and a whole home air purifier made everything as tip top and nice as i could but yeah it, it and with somebody who already has uh, mitochondria that are not functioning as well as they should, you have to be really careful with detox. Like re- you can really, really mess somebody up. And I've seen it time and time again of people that come into my community of like they, ha- you know, they come up positive for tests on mold and SIRS is a big one right now. And they go through these protocols and they get even more sick. And I'm like, this is where hydrogen really piques my interest because with my daughter, what we've seen uh, is nothing short of remarkable with uh, with her starting to kind of be more of herself than I've seen in over a year. Um, doing the inhalation, uh, and which I feel like is the biggest mover of the needle, is the inhalation, yeah. uh, probably about 90 minutes a day, and then drinking the water throughout the day as well, probably two to three liters a day is what she's drinking. I'm drinking. We're all drinking it. So <laughs> let's talk about your thoughts on hydrogen. Well, I mean, we need water to survive, don't we? Mm. Oh, um, yes. You know, we're, we're 65% water and um, approximately as a, as a human body, and we need water to survive. And, and, and water uh, can be something that's used to carry hydrogen. So to me, um, it's a no-brainer. Every single person listening, every single person that listens to this story, every single person on planet Earth, in my opinion, needs to be utilizing hydrogen um, infused in their water and also consider inhalation on a daily basis for at least 20, 25 minutes, 15 minutes, you don't have more time. And, and I think people didn't understand that, that what hydrogen is. This is not a new technology. This is an no. old this is an old truth that has now been brought forward. And I'm thankful to God that we have this. I really, really am. And I don't make any bones about it. This is not something that just boom, popped up. It is right. It's always been that way. We just right. sometimes have to get out of our own way to discover what's true. So hydrogen is the smallest molecule on the periodic table. Those of you that might remember that from back old chemistry class, it's the upper left corner and one neutron, one proton, one electron. It's one. H, you know, there it is, H in the upper left corner. And because of its size, it is part of all matter. All matter has hydrogen. So therefore, its size allows it access to every place. Mm -hmm. And every place within our body that normally can keep things out, which, which is good, or let things out appropriately, which is also good, it can't avoid the intrusion of hydrogen. It cannot. So hydrogen actually is something that can penetrate all barriers, including the mitochondria. Mm-hmm. Now that's important because like I mentioned to you a moment ago, and the listeners probably know this, those free radicals that we create are normal. And mm-hmm. and I suppose, you know, you get right into the science, there's some purposes behind some of them, like hydrogen peroxide, for example, it has some mm-hmm. antiviral purposes. But and it's like we, we look at free radicals. Oh, my God, those are bad. We got to stop that because everything has a purpose, mm-hmm. even if we don't understand it. Right. Funny side note, but I have even threatened to write a book entitled God Made Parasites 2. Um, I don't understand their purposes, but right. to really try to just eradicate something without mm-hmm. understanding what you're doing is is very short sighted. But these. These free radicals, they can build up in the system. And if they don't get um, 
antioxidized, let's say, because they are really missing an electron. And the, the, the process of free radical damage is really like this rogue uh, mob structure is yeah. going around trying to wreak havoc, right? Mm -hmm. And so there, there is one thing that I know of, just one thing that I know of that can eradicate excessive free radicals and turn them back into water which is what we need mm -hmm. and that one thing is hydrogen that's one thing and to me this is so simple that it should be embraced within every person's home every child's life every grandparent's life um, i was actually uh, flown up to speak at the nfl combine recently oh wow I don't know if, uh, you know, the people at Holy Hydrogen even told you that, but um, mm -hmm. they, um, the NFL players had brought the attention of hydrogen to some of their team docs. I didn't know anything about that. And um, I was privileged and honored to get to fly up there to Indianapolis and um, stand in a room with every single team chiropractor. It was pretty wild because they all had the little shirts on and um, paraphernalia of the themes. And, and I had 15 minutes <laughs> tell them about hydrogen and how it affected free radicals and how it could possibly remediate and or prevent things like TBI, how it could mm -hmm. in, improve recovery, how it could reduce inflammation. Mm -hmm. and, and I was just saying, God help me, please, you know, because I got this one shot here. You know, you get one shot to affect the world in these moments, you know, right? And uh, they fin I finished in 15 minutes and... Uh, my hope was they got it, but hands started coming up, Sarah. Mm -hmm. They did. They started asking questions. And, and I think this is, um, you know, I'm just grateful to be a part of this, but was able to give them some ideas such as, you know, um, why don't you put hydrogen in your ice baths? Mm -hmm. You know, and they were like, whoa. And I said, why don't you let those players when you're having on the sideline, breathing a little oxygen, won't you bleed a little hydrogen in there? Hydrogen. So they can mm -hmm. prevent some of this TBI that might mm -hmm. uh, affect their lives and, and, you know, they want to be donating their brains to science anymore for negative purposes. Maybe they can mm -hmm. donate their brains for good purposes. And and their eyes lit up. And I could see their hearts opened to realizing that there's a better way. And I think it just didn't open to them as a team. I think it opened to them as individuals. Mm. And that's when you appeal to the heart of common sense of mankind. Um, it's important. And and certainly I think it's relevant to talk about the genetic component of this at some point here, but um, without question, uh, when you bring hydrogen in, there is a free radical molecule called hydroxyl radical. And that's a big old term. People can look it up, but when it gets built up because of the lack of the uh, dealing with free radicals, that one is going to create all kinds of havoc and it has no good purpose that I can find. Not one. It's just kind of the, 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 the molecular debris that's like tips you over the edge. Mm. Well, hydrogen can selectively eradicate all of your excess hydroxyl radicals. And even when you drink it, you know, I'm, I had mm. a little kombucha here, but um, when you drink it carried in by water, just drinking it, it will go systemic in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. 15 minutes. And when you inhale it, it goes across the blood brain barrier immediately. Yeah. So I don't know why this is not more mainstream. Agree. It should be, and it should be in every home out there, I believe. Well, here's the thing, like kids like my daughter, I mean, it's a tough situation. I haven't like talked about the full story on the on the channel. I will eventually, because it's just been like the worst heart not the worst, but the hardest year of my life, having a new baby and having her decline so much. I knew it was a neurodegenerative condition when she started having grand mal seizures and was in the ICU and it was terrifying. And so that's when I started really studying hydrogen and the ability of it to cross the blood brain barrier, because what's happening, I think with a lot of these kids, so many kids have what's, you know, called pans pandas. I think it's all autoimmune encephalitis. Yeah, honestly, I, I don't, I think pans pandas is a fancy way to get people to spend more money on functional medicine, testing and supplements and detoxing and it takes parents on a ride and it makes me so mad because I've been yeah. there. Uh, I think it's all autoimmune encephalitis, but whatever we want to call it, there's extreme brain inflammation and the hydrogen inhalation 
literally has done for her what nothing else could do. And she spells on her letter board, you know, um, she's finally well enough to start spelling again because for a while there she just couldn't even spell. Like she couldn't, her brain was just so inflamed. She couldn't go to her board and spell. And I asked her, I said, what is, what does it feel like when you breathe the hydrogen? And she said that um, the fire that's on her brain gets, it, it feels like a whoosh. Yeah that the fire goes out when the height, when she's breathing the hydrogen. And I'm like, right. Oh God. Cause you know, there's that movie Benji. brain on fire. And that's what it feels like when you have these neuro uh, inflammatory conditions as your brain is literally on fire. And she said the hydrogen like puts out the fire and I'm like, okay, so this legitimately does <laughs> calm the neuroinflammation. And I just think the implications for this are huge because leptin resistance begins in the brain. So many uh, conditions begin with the ability, with the brain being inflamed and the correct signaling unable to, uh, to take place, you know? And so I'm just like, wow, this could, this could be so huge for so many different, uh, for different things. Like you're talking about with the NFL and preventing a CTE. I mean, that's, it's huge, right? Yeah. And, and I've seen it like, um, and this is just common sense again. I've seen it with decision making. Like, what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Decision making. Well, uh, so Agreed. an inflamed yes. brain is an angry brain is a stress brain. Yeah. And so an angry brain, a stress brain is going to be a brain that's sort of going to respond to the environment in a way that uh, is emergent. And so mm -hmm. you're talking about this influx or initiation of the cortisol mechanism from our adrenal glands. So you're mm -hmm. going to have all kinds of cortisol going on, which is stress. Mm -hmm. And again, when you get stress going on, you get digestion goes down back to the gut and you get all of our other, you know, negative pathways elevated uh, for a longer time than they should. Now, stress will keep you alive. But when it's mm -hmm. chronic, I call it hypercortisolemia, you know, it's kind of a weird term that we kind of came up with. It's, uh, but it's it makes sense. So when you become hyper stressed, you operate on only one side of your brain because it's that emotional emergent reactionary side and you sort of neglect the um, reasonable or rational or critical thinking side and you become dominant in that side mm -hmm. and every decision becomes this reactionary thing and it becomes not well thought out and then we have regret which sets you off we have regret with financial decisions life decisions relational decisions child you know whatever and and we just get off course and I I think right now we're seeing a trend in society that's heading horrifically fast at that pace. Mm -hmm. We don't think anymore. And mm -hmm. and I do concur with you on the pants panda concept. I, I draw that akin to fibromyalgia. You know, it's kind of mm -hmm. a dump. Everybody's yeah. looking for a diagnosis, man. The yeah. bottom line is you mentioned something key. Encephalitis. Itis is the key. Everybody, I-T-I-S, inflammation. Okay. Yep. When you have inflammation that's chronic, systemic, and over overriding everything, it's like your fire department personnel going out there to fight a fire like they're supposed to. Yeah. But those guys never got to come back to the house. Man, they've been out there for years now. They're out of water to put out the fire. Mm -hmm. They're out of manpower to have the energy to put out the fire. I'm talking about mitochondria. I'm talking about immune systems. Mm -hmm. And your whole system turns upside down. Your body's just trying to borrow from Peter to pay Paul. And it becomes this, this quagmire mm -hmm. of an environment or terrain inside of us. And and I think that, um, and I wish people would eat right. I do. And no too. kidding to, to fix yeah. the gut. But um, even if you didn't start that process now, you got to start with water. Mm -hmm. You, you got to mm -hmm. start with hydrogen. You got to start here because if, you can get yourself thinking reasonably again and not be so darn emotional. You might not yeah. go down the pathways of comfort food and you might have a more motivation to eat better. Like your, right. your daughter, that just touches my heart like a, a whoosh. I, I picture that like a waterfall splashing mm -hmm. on a raging inferno in, an, in, yeah. a, in a forest. And, yeah. and I, I, it's like the trees are going, thank you, because I was about to lose my life. Right. You know? And I think, wow, how touching is that? And, and I, every day, me, I will inhale it 15, 20 minutes myself and, mm -hmm. and I will drink it all day long. And I've been mm -hmm. asked for is, 
is there harm to drinking it all day long? I don't think so. I, I can't find any studies out there. And I've, I've read a lot of them. I mean, I've probably read over a thousand myself and there's, there's a couple thousand out there and mm -hmm. they're based, a lot of them are based upon disease models, which, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, whatever, but um, I'm all about prevention and avoidance. And uh, that's why I think, you know, from a disease model standpoint, there's relevance, much relevance. And I think there's probably applicability in life as a whole. And that's why I think this has got to be looked at, not just like, oh, my God, if I have this, I go there. No, do it all the time anyway. Yep. That's what I've been doing it since we have the machine. I'm like, well, why yeah. not? And my sleep is better. I stopped waking up to pee in the middle of the night. Like, I feel so much better. And I'm I'm lean. Like, everyone's like, what's yeah. your secret? I'm like, mm. I mean, I optimize my leptin and my mitochondria, and I do a lot of things. But since I started the hydrogen, my metabolism is like, am I about to turn 45 or 25? <laughs> like, my husband's like, are you taking something? Like, what are you doing to have, like, visible abs at your age? I'm like... I don't know. I, I feel like it's all the other stuff I'm doing, but the hydrogen has just done something to my mitochondria and my metabolism that I'm like, this is some voodoo. <laughs> like, this is amazing. You know, people need to know that like free radical buildup mm -hmm. can create lipid peroxidation and protein nitration. I'm talking about damaging lipids, damaging our protein. So it damages function. Mm -hmm. It can lead to heart disease, brain disease, um, uh, immune system compromise. It does mm -hmm. that, period. It can lead to depression. It can lead mm -hmm. to the lack of uh, production of melatonin, which is infectious. Yes. It leads to the lack of production of our neurotransmitters, serotonin and dopamine, which leads to depression. So you see where I'm going with that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just a result of a buildup of one, one free radical called peroxynitrite. Mm -hmm. And it's just, there, there's basically three free radicals that are normally functional, I guess, for a little bit. And I guess there's superoxide, there's um, hydrogen peroxide, and there's peroxy nitrite that are sort of rolling through that mitochondria all the time. And, and we deal with those pretty effectively uh, if we don't get them in excess. Mm -hmm. But if they go in excess, they sort of quickly convert, if you will, to these hydroxyl radicals that become like the the end all be all destructive forces are like atomic bombs going off right. in your life, you know, and, right. uh, and they become a negative and people should know we do a ton of those genetic analyses of um, mitochondrial single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs, you know, and those would mm -hmm. be looking at the, uh, the enzyme superoxide dismutase, catalase, glutathione peroxidase. And people need to know this that the superoxide dismutase wild type, which is the most common variant in our world's population, has a slow function. Mm. Wow. So that means that everybody listening has a tendency when the environment is pulling the trigger of That's the genetic true. gun, we have a tendency to have free radical buildup. Yeah, I, it's my brain is just like going. I have a good friend of mine that... Uh, had a very, very stressful event happen. And all of a sudden was like cholesterol levels went through the roof, which that's, you know, like questionable as to whether or not that's like a big deal. But then yeah. went to get a CAC. The CAC was like a 462. And when it got an MRI, there was already some um, calcification happening in the brain also yeah. young in the 40s. Oh. And I said, get on the damn hydrogen now, yeah, get yeah. on the hydrogen. And I, it's, and they were like, well, you know, my twin brother doesn't eats worse than I do, has a worse, worse lifestyle than I do. I'm like, but your brother did not have this ridiculously stressful thing just happen in their life. And your, your heteroplasmy just went, whoosh, you know, and yes. that is why this, you have a gen, he, this person has a genetic predisposition towards heart disease, mm -hmm. towards issues with stroke, heart disease, all that. Yes. But was perfectly healthy. And then this big stressful event happened. And now we have all these issues. And I think that I'm like, oh, that's it. <laughs> there it is. Oh, totally. Yeah. With that situation, you know, you got, people need to know that, um, the genes don't create disease, but they, they set up they vulnerabilities set up. in certain areas, you know, like mm -hmm. in that situation, the vulnerabilities to heart disease might be there because the person doesn't uh, really, um, you know, they produce a lot of LDL, perhaps they don't, mm -hmm. they're not able to produce sufficient 
or enough HDL. HDL and maybe they've yeah. got a little bit of um, uh, variance with uh, the ability to maintain HDL. Mm -hmm. So all that can lead to this um, lipid peroxidation, the smallest development of particles that allow, you know, penetration of these small particles into these places. You know, we talk about leakiness, right? There can be leaky, mm -hmm. leaky vessels, leaky vessel walls, leaky mm -hmm. endothelium. And, um, mm -hmm. and they get built up there and then the body will try to wall those things off with calcium. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a normal response, but yet it can become, um, you know, a, a tragic uh, pathologic situation when the calcium builds up so much that they get stiff. You know, it's mm -hmm. like a, it's like a rock and uh, you don't want a calcified brain. You yeah. don't want calcified arteries. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've got to stop the process. Yeah. And, you know, people are going to breathe to live. They have to have water to live. Mm -hmm. Why not, if you have the ability, just, I just think, why not people think about this? If you have the ability to put something in the air that you breathe and the water that you drink, that could help you remediate potentially tragic excessive amounts of inflammation and free radicals that can lead to lead to conditions. And we all know that chronic systemic inflammation is a part of every disease process. Right. Every one of them, all those itises we hear about, I've got arthritis, encephalitis, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, you know, the, the, the process. And why wouldn't we do that? You right. know, there's no reason that I can think of that we wouldn't. And, and it's like, Wow. Mm -hmm. The answers are right in front of us. Mm -hmm. We need to embrace those things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've got my friend on the hydrogen now, so I'm praying that maybe yeah. some of these things and that, you know, the doctors say, oh, it can't be reversed and sorry. Mm -hmm. And we can just stop the stop the progression with a, you know, they want to go on a, a Mediterranean diet and all this stuff. I'm like, mm, yeah, but I really think this hydrogen could could help uh the situation i'm never going to say nothing is uh irreversible i will never that will yeah. never come out of my mouth i'll never tell my daughter if this is your diagnosis i think the people that get so hung up on the diagnosis and that those are the hardest people for me to um support is that they're leading well i have this i am this you know it just becomes yeah. their whole personality and i'm like this is hard what you're dealing with and it's you know, I'm sorry. We have yeah. to let go of this identity that you formed around what's happened to your health if we want to if we want to move on, you know, and that might sound harsh or insensitive. Mm -hmm. It's coming from a place of love and compassion and wanting to see that person uh, get better, you know, and heal. I won't. When somebody comes in my wife and I's office, uh, we talk about that so much. Um, I want them to understand who they are. My name is Mark and I happen to be a naturopathic doctor. I love people dearly. Your name is Sarah. You know, it's like, that's who we are. Mm -hmm. I am not type two diabetes. I am not mm -hmm. heart disease. I'm not cancer. But what happens is that the whole society is set up dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And it is, you, you go to the doctor or a doctor, I'm not knocking doctors, some of the most brilliant people in the world that I know, smarter than I am. But if you go into a place with one question, that you want that expert to answer and they're expected to answer it and they're mm -hmm. trained to answer that question. And the question is this, what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. Give me something that's wrong with me. And mm -hmm. that's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but if I sit down with my wife, Michelle, and we start the day out, Hey, sweetheart, you know, let's have a fun experiment today. Let's sit here all day and let's just talk about, What's wrong with each other? <laughs> I don't that's going to be a real fun day. <laughs> that's going to be a miserable day. And all I'm going to think of is embracing the negatives. So when people come in, in our offices and we got people that we work with all around the country and world. Thank mm -hmm. you. You know, electronics. Um, I don't let them go there. And they mm -hmm. might say that I, I'm going to stop them kindly, gently in love and say, look. You may be in a state of dis hyphen ease right now. Okay, fine. But let's talk about what's right. And let's mm -hmm. make what's right and functional better. Mm -hmm. And over the course of time, that better will overwhelm that underperforming area and make the state of dis-ease come into alignment, giving you this harmonious, synchronous function of the body, which is peace, man. And so mm -hmm. 
I don't know how every disease process gets reversed. I don't know how anybody does all that. I mean, I, I try to keep studying, but sometimes I don't know. But I've seen some crazy things be reversed, and sometimes I knew why, sometimes I didn't. And I'm okay with either because people get happy and blessed. And so even with your friend, I, I think if, if that friend is listening right now, um, uh, words for you, three words, listen to Sarah. <laughs> Oh, well, I hope so. I because I, I want to see this person heal. And I believe in I believe in everyone's ability to heal. Um, we just have to kind of get some of those ideas out of the way. And it, it can it's tough. I mean, trust me, I've been on the other side of it with my daughter and it takes you to some dark and scared places, some fearful places. And you that's, you know, that's where faith and prayer comes in. And, you know, not being trapped uh, by diagnosis by words. Um, and really having faith beyond it because things can happen. I saw um, a good friend of mine who's actually a quantum physicist and he studies health and, you know, the ability for, he's a biochemist, a quantum physicist. His dad, he ca actually came through here in August and his dad had a blockage in his heart, was actually about to have triple bypass surgery and they took him for the surgery did we're doing the scan and they were like um blockage is totally gone i don't know what you did i don't know what happened but it's it's gone um and and they were, he was actually like frustrated because he thought he was going to have this surgery and he's like well the body has this ability to heal and regenerate far beyond sometimes what i think we can understand and process and i think that we can't forget that piece as well, you know? Amen. Agreed. Yeah. I, I think there's no way we, we should forget that because like, um, if we ever think we have it figured out, that's the beginning of the end. Agree. If we ever think we got the answers, uh, that's the beginning of egoism and egotism. Right. And we've got to stop that. Um, our, our job is to really continue to seek out truth, mm -hmm. seek out information. And when we get a revelation, or the light bulbs come on and things like hydrogen, we just mm -hmm. need to get on board and do it. Now, right. are we going to find out years from now, probably after we're long and gone, um, more potential things out there and even more benefits of hydrogen? Probably. Are there right. going to be other ways to use it? Probably. Are you going to be able to put it in a, a lotion cream? And there's even experimentation going on right now with um, IV use. I mean, mm -hmm. is, is there things that we can do in the future? Yeah. Now, but I do I expect them to come from people in this country as far as the mainstream. No way. It's going to probably come from other countries, Japan. other, yeah, Japan, Korea, um, you know, even other countries such as like Russia, you know, they're kind of cutting edge out there in some areas. And, mm. and you know, it's it's like I'm not anti-American at all. It's not no. the point. But America is bought and paid for. Mm -hmm. by by big pharma. So all the studies are funded. Medicine is funded. Education is funded by that. So these discussions right here are not really had um, in mainstream and they won't be. But mm -hmm. in the space we're talking about right now, people, because of the availability of information through podcasts like this, through the Internet, just research, availability is powerful. And there's some people out of here that are smart, smart, smart people and very intelligent. And you can't learn intelligence and common sense in school. You right. learn that through repetition, practice, trial and error, pain, victory, falling down and getting up again. And I think yep. that that's what you've done in your life, it sounds like. Oh, you yeah. Learn that. And the more you do that, the stronger, more resilient, and hopefully more wise you become. Mm, I love that. Well, real quickly, maybe we can just wrap with, um, you know, my curiosity about hydrogen, because I've had Greg on the show. I know you're familiar with Greg. Yeah. Because I know people will ask, you know, I, we use the holy hydrogen and I believe in it, uh, love it. Um, I know you work with them. I get a lot of questions about the tablets, um, the smaller bottles. Uh, what, what's your opinion on things like that? Well, you know, there's a, a lot of teaching on that. And I, I think there's a, there's a nice um, group of people out at the Southern Utah University, Molecular Hydrogen Institute, really good group of people. And this, the, the doctor, I, people can look it up, Dr. Tyler LeBaron. And he's a really mm -hmm. good guy with education. He, he is not one to be uh, selective and opinionated with any sort of modality. But this is what I know. 
when you use that elemental magnesium sort of to create that, that's the tablets I'm talking mm -hmm. about, create mm -hmm. hydrogenation of the water. It will work. It mm -hmm. will. I mean, you'll get this. Uh, and I was using that way before holy hydrogen, way before I'd met those people. When I met them, they're like, you don't, you know about hydrogen, Dr. Dr. Sherwood. And I'm like, yeah. And they were like, what? You know, they kind of freaked them out because yeah. my wife and I have been traveling around with those little pills, little gray pills like that for mm -hmm. years. And, and they work. Now I'm not going to despair. They work, you know, they do, they do turn the water dingy gray. It, it does mm -hmm. taste like bath water and you're probably mm -hmm. going to get some um, uh, metallic um, particles in there that probably might be not what you want, you know, right. Yeah. So yeah. that's important to know. Um, when you look at technology of hydrogen, um, creation you got to look at the manufacturing process because you want a separate compartment that the electrolysis creates the hydrogen gas that infuses it into another compartment with the water if you get them together it can somewhat change the ph and even molecular structure of the water yeah further if the metals in the machine are not proper in other words if you get some inferior metals you can get metal leaching in there so mm. you've got to look at the manufacturing process of it and the uh, particulars about the way it's manufactured. I am very comfortable and I would not be using holy hydrogen. I wouldn't have it in my home. I wouldn't have it in my business. And I've got two machines, one in each and let my employees dig out of it. I mm -hmm. would not do that if I didn't believe in that at all. Mm -hmm. Now um, I do think that there are some portable machines out there that could be developed with the same technology, smaller version. Um, I hope that that happens sometimes, but I can tell people right now because there's a lot of them pushed out here on the open market that um, frankly are, are just about as inferior as they can become. You, you can't buy cheap. If you get cheap, you will absolutely be disappointed long term. When I look at a holy hydrogen machine, I look at it like a Vitamix. You know, mm -hmm. I, want, I want the best. It's got uh, the right material. It's got the right long-standing efficacy of um, lack of breakdown. And, you know, people that don't know, it's it's going to create about a liter and a half every 30 minutes and holds it for 12 hours. You just mm -hmm. you got to have it all day long and it's got a yep. little place you can put a cannula, you can breathe out of it too. So it's, it's really um, ingenious the way it is. Um, and I think that um, people should strongly consider looking at this not just as as purchasing a machine right. that's not the point they should look at it as an investment into their life mm -hmm. the legacy and the future of the ability to have health better it's not about adding um years in life it's about adding life in years and I, I think this is one modality that does that i agree yeah thank you for that because i i get those questions a lot and i I, I understand people, it's a pricey, it's an investment, you know, for me, yeah. it was a no brainer because we're getting uh, $40,000 for immunotherapy versus a holy hydrogen machine. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> so one has side effects and may or may not work. One has no side effects. There's no risk. Let's do it. You know, yeah. and the whole family can use it. My son drinks the hydrogen water. He loves it. You know, he's 17 months and yeah, it just made a lot of sense for us. But I do have a lot of people that are like, I can't necessarily afford that. And I'm like, you know, I think it's something to to hope to save up for because I have seen the bottles, they break really easy. I've seen yeah. some of the reports of them leaching heavy metals into the water. And I just can't recommend well, any of the little small bottles at all. And so um, hopefully some... Oh, go ahead. That I'm sorry. I, I, when people pay for those things, I've learned this over time. And, and this is, might be a, a place people didn't know. You know, you, you, I know that uh, they have payment plans, which is good. Mm -hmm. But check this out. I've seen people use HSA and FSA accounts for that. Oh. Practitioner involvement with a letter. Oh, That's nice. not hard. That's easy. So FSA and HFA, flexible spending account and health spending account monies are, are sort of these, these debit accounts that are out here to use for your health. And people typically can put way more in that than it would be for a, a, a machine and you can use that. So if, if that's something people have thought about, I've seen it work more than mm. one. Oh, that's good to know. That's really good to know because I know a lot of people have those in there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's great to know. Well, awesome. You got to kind of work around that. But um, 
you know, certainly we've helped people do that a lot of times. Wonderful. Well, that's really good to know. And I'll, I'll make sure everyone knows that, uh, that is in my community as well as something maybe to try, get a practitioner to help you get a letter and, um, see if you can get it that, that avenue. Cause it is a medical device. I mean, yes. it will save you money in the long run on medical treatments in my opinion. So yeah, right. well, this has been, I feel like I could keep talking and <laughs> so many more topics we could cover, but, um, probably should wrap up. I'd love to know where, if someone's driving, where people could find you, you a website, social media, anything like that. Yeah, we're easy to get a hold of, Sarah. It's Sherwood.tv, Sherwood.tv. And through that site, there's ways to connect on our social media. We give a lot of stuff away, you know, just oh, nice. freebie stuff, you know. Uh, people can subscribe to uh, our blog and videos. We have a television show that airs uh, on a bunch of different networks. And we have some movies we've made, some books we've written. And, uh, of course, we work with people, too. I mean, we have, like, a, a free webinar that's every uh, month that people can, you know, attend and ask us virtual questions and then they can work with us if they want to. So we're just out here to serve, man. And and that's that's all I can say. But we're at Sherwood.tv and just happy to be here and happy to help. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure to put that in the show notes. And this has just been so much fun and it's been absolutely lovely meeting you. And I'm so excited for my community to uh, to have the opportunity to talk to you and, or to meet you as well. <laughs> well, it's been an honor and thanks for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening to the Evolving Wellness Podcast. Just a quick little reminder, nothing in this show is medical advice or meant to be taken as a substitute for working one-on-one -on -one with a healthcare practitioner. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Dr. Sherwood. Make sure to head on over to his website, follow his channels. If you are interested in the Holy Hydrogen Machine, again, my code to save there is Sarah K and the link will be in the show notes for you as well you enjoyed the show, please head on over to Apple or Spotify to leave the show up to a five-star review, share with a friend, share with a family member. If you're on YouTube, give us a comment to say hello, leave us a like, and it will help to get the show out to more people. As always, thank you so much for listening or watching, whichever one you did. I want to continue to carry this message of a different way of looking at our health, alternative ways of healing and how we should continue to have hope even if people tell us that hope is something we should lose. I disagree. Thanks again for listening or watching and I will catch you next time.